Hello. I thought I would film a little bit of an update. Um, I considered not even like showering for this video because I wanted to show you just like how really real um, it's been just for the last few weeks because I am 38 weeks and um, five days. I don't shower every day because um, I am tired and large and hoping this baby comes sooner than later. But I decided to shower because um, we're going to go out later today and do some things. Um, so I figured I will shower and put some skincare on with you guys since I really, I'm not putting on makeup today. Um, but I thought I would provide like a little bit of an update, a little bit of an update. Um, you will have seen my other update video at this point. Um, but as of right now, I still haven't posted it because I'm still not legally divorced. <laughs> it seems like it's never going to happen at this point, but whatever. It is what it is. It, the situation with the baby sucks because of it. Um, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So I thought I would provide, since the baby's not born yet, I would film another little bit of an update, maybe talk about some of like the differences in my pregnancy, along with a little bit of like a life update. Um, so since I filmed that last video, um, obviously I'm almost two weeks more pregnant. <laughs> um, still no baby. Um, we had a little bit of like a family emergency kind of thing. So Pugsley, you guys all know Pugsley. Um, uh, he started, he was, I was noticing that he was breathing kind of funny. He was just taking like very deep breaths. It didn't really seem like he was getting enough air. Um, I caught him open mouth breathing a few times, but not panting, but just like he was having a hard time breathing. So on my birthday, mind you, this happened on my birthday. Um, I took him into the vet to get him checked out to see what was going on. And, um, they found that there was, so my, I took him to my normal vet. They found that there was some like fluid around and in his lungs um, and that it was probably related to heart failure. So my emergency or my uh, regular vet referred me to the emergency vet where they could like, you know, make a more thorough diagnosis and, you know, treatment and whatever if need be. So we found out that he's got, um, his both of his heart valves are enlarged so he is experiencing heart failure and um i don't know exactly i don't know exactly what this means though i do know that um cats that have heart failure especially this kind of heart failure where it's you know it's biventricular um diagnosis or like prognosis is usually six months to a year from when it's discovered. Um, so yeah, so um, I took him to the emergency vet. They put him in like an oxygen chamber um, and then they did a more thorough diagnos a diagnosis and they told me about, you know, they're gonna, well, they told me all of this. And then of course they were like, you know, you can also like, they're, they would give me like a treatment plan. And they're like, you know, with a cat that has failure this severe, you know, they're not going to last that long, blah, blah, blah. We could put him down. Like the, it was <laughs> not a great way to spend my birthday. Um, I spent the, like the whole day crying the whole day at the animal hospital. It was just like, it was awful. Um, but ultimately what we decided to do was do a treatment. So they, they, uh, drained as much fluid from around the lungs as they could. Um, they had him in oxygen. He's now on a diuretic to help with fluid retention. So that way that doesn't happen again, or if it happens, it's like much slower or he's just, it's the fluid doesn't accumulate as fast. Cause we don't know how fast it accumulated this time. I, he, I noticed he was breathing kind of funny for a few days. I don't know how long, I don't really know how long it had been going on. And obviously with the heart failure, he was acting totally normal. I have no idea how long that was going on for too. So unfortunately we found it at a very late stage, which is sad because he's so, he's so young. Um, so what we ultimately decided on was to do a treatment to get him through this episode and then see what we can do to sort of 
not prolong his life and heal him because we can't do that, but like give him, you know, the rest of the best life that we can give him because we don't know how long we have. And I was not prepared. <laughs> I was not prepared to put my cat down that day and I was not going to do it because um, he's been acting totally normal and I want to, I want to give him as much life as I can. So they, you know, they removed fluid from around his lungs. They did a more thorough look at his heart. Um, they said, you know, they're really concerned about like blood clots with his condition because he's got turbulent heart patterns or something. I don't know. Um, so he's on a, he's on like a blood thinner to help with blood clots. Cause I guess that's a really big concern, um, with what he's got. And then the diuretic to help with like fluid. So, um, I'm gonna start doing some skincare while I do this. So he was there for about 24 hours. Um, you know, the, the same day that I brought him in, they did the chest tap, whatever. They got the fluid out as much as they could. They did not get all of it out. Um, they said they ended up getting like 140 milliliters or cc's. I'm not really sure how much they got. Um, they got a decent amount out, not all of it, but as much as they could uh, with just the positioning. And then, um, you know, the next day they took him off the oxygen just to see how he'd respond and he would do and see if he could go home that day. And he was doing, you know, well enough that, you know, he could be sent home. So we took him home. Um, he's been on, you know, the blood thinners and the diuretic for the last couple of days. Um, I'm taking him back in in a couple of weeks to just check on his kidneys to make sure that he's handling the medications well. And if, you know, we need to adjust, we will adjust. And then at some point after the baby's born, um, we will take him to a cardiologist to sort of see the real extent of like how bad it is. And maybe if they can give us like a better time frame or like what to expect, you know, things like that. So like, obviously, we're not looking at like him having like a super long life. Um, but we want to be able to, to do what we can for him, you know, while he's still here. So that, that is the, not something that I'm, I'm not, I'm sad. I'm very sad. Um, cause Pugsley is a great, he's a great cat. And um, he's so young, and it's just not fair that on top of like all the other things that I've had to deal with over the last couple of years that I'm now possibly at some point soon, maybe losing another cat after I lost a cat last year that I'd had for 16 years. And you know, her passing was also traumatic because she had cancer and you know, there was, ugh. I'm just sad. It's been, a, it's been a hard week. Um, so there's that update. Um, right now, you know, he's doing well at home. Um, we're giving him lots of love and treats and just, you know, cuddles and he's been very affectionate. I, like, obviously we can tell he's feeling better um, because he's just, he's feeling, there was like the day or two after he first came home, like we could tell he was very tired and he was just not feeling himself, but you know, then at the last couple of days, he's been feeling more himself and he's, he's been very affectionate and he's just, you can tell he feels better. Um, so we're just trying to give him the best life that we can at this point. So there's that update, Pugsley update. Um, the update on me is I am still very much pregnant. If you would like to see the giant, the giant belly, 38 weeks in five days. I hoped, I had kind of hoped by now that I would no longer be pregnant, but um, that does not seem to be the case. But, you know, it is what it is. Babies are going to come when they want to come or when they're ready. So like, can't force her out, but. <laughs> um, so I thought I would tell you a little bit about my experience, um, like the differences in experience between my first and second pregnancy. Um, I am doing a birth center again, so I am, you know, the whole, the plan is to do the whole thing, the, you know, the same at the birth center, natural, um, all that, that is the plan. Um, hopefully it still works out. Like I've had a pretty, 
uncomplicated pregnancy. Um, so they're, they're not really, I, yeah, I am considered geriatric <laughs> at this point because now I'm 37. And, uh, you know, after 35, they like, they call you old, even though lots of people are having babies, you know, older and older these days. I don't really feel like, I, I mean, I know that they say that there are like concerns having children later in life and whatever, but I, I don't know how much of that is like real or how much of that is like too, ins it's like fear based. I don't really know. Um, but yeah, so, um, how my pregnancies have been different. Well, I had a lot more morning sickness this time around, a lot. Um, I started feeling it around like seven weeks and it lasted until like 16 and it was like constant. It was, and like even eating didn't solve it like it did, you know, with Oliver. Um, I just was constant, I was sick. Like it was just constant morning sickness and it was miserable. <laughs> I was miserable in the beginning. It did level out and I've been sort of like better, but I've had heartburn since 26 weeks, which was way sooner than I started heartburn with Oliver. Um, I've had hip pain since like almost the very beginning, um, which I didn't get until later again with Oliver. So I've got heartburn sooner. The morning sickness was worse. Um, you know, the hip pain has been very, very bad, especially the last couple of weeks. Um, it's been, it's been really like sleeping is impossible almost. So the hip pain has been terrible. And so weight wise, I think I gained 60 to 65, possibly 70 pounds with Oliver. I gained a lot of weight with Oliver and a lot of that was due to, <laughs> um, a lot of it was like stress eating. You know, there was, it was like emotional eating. Um, so there was, there was that involved. This time around, I started off, my pre-pregnancy weight was much lower because I lost roughly 30 pounds, more than 30 pounds um, in the process of my divorce. Um, I basically just, I didn't stop eating, but like my, all the stress and like everything involved, I dropped 30 pounds very, very quickly. Um, so I start, my pre-pregnancy weight was much lower than when I was with Oliver. I was about 25 pounds lower than, no, it was like 20, you know, like 20 pounds lower than when I first started with Oliver and I've gained about 40. So I've gained a lot less, though it doesn't feel like it. And like my rib cage is apparently expanded this time around. I don't remember it doing that with Oliver. So like I ordered a bunch of like nursing bras and like none of them fit because I didn't think to measure myself because I was like, well, I, nothing changed the last time and I was able to wear the same like bra size. But now like with the new bras that I've bought in, my rib cage has apparently expanded a lot more than I expected it to. So, um, and my hips definitely have expanded. So I was, I was, a, I was pretty skinny. <laughs> <laughs> pretty skinny pre-pregnancy and I'm I'm roughly 40 pounds heavier which isn't too bad because I mean they say that I don't know how they say the average weight or like a healthy weight is between like 25 and 35 that seems like almost impossible especially since like it feels like babies are just like bigger these days I don't know um like Oliver was eight pounds but I feel like I feel like babies are being born at like nine ten eleven pounds these days and like what is that what is that exactly? I don't know if that's, I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of nervous because my boyfriend was apparently, him and all of his siblings were apparently very large, very early. I guess, I think they were all born around like 37 weeks and uh, they were all like big, like nine, 10, 11 pounds. So frankly, that makes me kind of nervous. <laughs> we'll see. Um, and then what else? What else has been different? Um, so I, my glucose test and my GBS test both were negatives, which was the same with Oliver. So n neither of those were like a concern this time around. Um, I mean, really the, the biggest difference in like this pregnancy to like my last pregnancy has been all emotional. Um, having a like insanely supportive partner makes a huge difference in just like the like just how your pregnancy goes someone who will literally do anything without question and who who has who <laughs> will and has done anything without question um 
will do it gladly and willingly and lovingly, like all makes a huge difference in just like your emotional state while you're pregnant. So like, yeah, I've been dealing with a lot of stressful things while pregnant this time around. Um, but it's like having a supportive person on the other side of that, like helping me get through those like stressful things instead of just being stressed all the time and like there never being any kind of like recovery from that, definitely different. Um, so like I've had a lot of, a lot more emotional support this time around from the person I needed it from the most, like my family has not been the most supportive and there's like a lot of family drama. Um, my sister has been super supportive, but like this, my, my mom and dad, my relationship with my mom and dad is very weird right now. Um, so that's been, I guess, kind of difficult and there really hasn't been a lot of support there. Uh, so like having the support from like my significant other is, has been really important. Um, and he's stepped up in so many ways. It's not, it's not even <laughs> like it's, I'm very lucky, um, that this is my partner. Um, really that's been the main difference is just emotional support. Uh, things I've done differently again like not a lot uh i feel like i was more prepared for oliver in some ways and like i'm not very prepared for this baby at all like i'm still buying things like we don't have a bassinet set up um we did put the car seat in though so we did do that <laughs> um I'm, I'm still like buying things that we need sort of like for the first weeks and months. I'm still working on like my postpartum sort of like care kit. I'm just like, I'm like, I'm very last minute with this one, but we're also, we're two very laid back people. And it's just sort of like, well, whatever we need, we'll get like, if you need something, I'll go run out and get it. You know, we'll make it, everything's fine. And it is like, I know that it's going to be fine and it's not going to be like an argument or a fight and it's like things are going to get taken care of. I'm going to get taken care of. The baby's going to be taken care of. Oliver's going to be taken care of. Like, I know, I, I trust that, you know, this time around where like last time I feel like if I didn't do everything, nothing, nothing would have been taken care of. And so like it, I, I, it was very much, I'm just there. The support is different. Um, I've been making a lot of like frozen meals um, to get that ready, I have one more meal that I'm hoping to make. I've been putting it off just because I'm, I'm feeling very large and lazy. <laughs> um, so I have one more meal that I need to make before I'm like totally stocked up, you know, in that department. So that way there's just, you know, some things, my boyfriend, my family, whoever's here can like throw in the oven for me, you know, so I don't have to cook. Um, my boyfriend cooks for me, uh, which is not something that I've ever had before. So that's been nice too to have to have that. Um, let's see. But really, not much has been super super different. Um, I did find a heartburn help, um, which I didn't do with, with Oliver. I just suffered. I just, cause I didn't know that there was like any natural sort of like, I took digestive enzymes, but I sort of really just suffered through the heartburn and like the indigestion and all that. This time I couldn't like, I, it was so bad. I was like throwing up, like that's how bad my heartburn was this time around. Um, so I found these. These are Wonder Bellies, no talc, no dyes, no parabens, no artificial sweeteners. Um, they're more natural than, you know, like Tums, whatever else is out there that has like all kinds of uh, artificial dyes and like sweeteners and things like that in it. So these have been like a godsend. I'm, I'm eating them like constantly, um, but they work. They work like pretty much immediately too. So like if I'm having an issue, which I was right before I sat down. So I took one of these, it takes, you know, it, it starts to cool like that sensation, like immediately. Um, I mean, they don't work forever. <laughs> so I do end up having to take like 
five to seven of these a day, depending on, you know, how bad it is. Some days I don't need to take any, some days I take one, some days I take seven, <laughs> some days I, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, if you're looking for a more like natural antacid heartburn relief kind of product, even if you're not pregnant, um, look into Wonder Belly. They have like four flavors, I think. The watermelon mint isn't my favorite and my boyfriend had to trek like 25 miles from home to find these at like the one target that sells them because there was like one morning where I woke up and I was just like, I was dying. And I was like, I found these online. He's like, okay, tell me where to get them and I will go get them. And you know, he went and did that. <sighs> so, you know, um, highly recommend those. Those are, those are great. And I'll definitely have those around. Not that I ever get heartburn when I'm not pregnant because that's really the only time I've ever had it. But you know, just in case, I, it's, it'd be nice to have something, you know because I'm getting older and who knows what's gonna happen with my digestive system. So aside from that, um, I have tried a couple of different pregnancy pillows. I tried this one called, I don't know, I saw it on like a Facebook ad, it's like Baby Bub or something. It's one where it like, it's, you sort of like sit in the mid, it's like a smaller one. I'll put a picture or a link or something so you guys know what I'm talking about. I could go get it, but I'm not gonna. Um, I, that, that wasn't exactly what I wanted or like needed. Um, plus my boyfriend and I are like big cuddlers. So because there was like a big pillow behind me and like a big pillow in front of me, it was kind of hard for us to like cuddle. Plus it didn't really work that well. So I've got, I'll link it below what I ended up buying that works better for me. It's sort of like a pillow, it's like a wedge. So whatever side I'm laying on, I'll like wedge the pillow under my belly to sort of like give it support and then it helps. Um, helps support my belly. Um, sleeping is still like massively uncomfortable. I'm up, you know, two or three times a night because my hips are killing me or I have to pee every five minutes or I just need to turn over or whatever. It's still like, it's soup, sleeping sucks. Um, and I've been like so hot for weeks. I don't even like sleep with a blanket. I sleep like on top of the covers. Um, so. <laughs> Sleeping sucks. I can't wait. I can't wait to not be pregnant anymore. But then I know like a whole host of other challenges and like body changes come after, you know, you're not pregnant anymore. So I'm not looking forward to any of those, but I am looking forward to not being pregnant anymore. Um, so I'll link the sort of like belly wedge that I've been using. Um, in terms of like skincare, I haven't, I haven't changed any skincare habits at all this time. I, I, I switched out like a couple of products with Oliver where I was like not using certain essential oils, but like I don't think any of the things that I'm using right now even have those essential oils in them anyway. It was like clary sage, lavender or something. I don't remember. I don't remember exactly, but um, I haven't, I haven't cut out anything and um, I've been pretty consistent with my skincare routine. It's been pretty basic. It's like what I did today was a hydration a uh, hydration product mixed with an oil, an eye cream, and then like a face cream, which is really what I've been doing. Um, so if you haven't heard about it yet, uh, the project that I'm working on, you should hear about it soon. Um, I'll have more time once the baby's born to sort of like do things like that, because I am planning on using some of my maternity leave to like get back into doing this on like a semi, semi-regular basis. I'm like sweating. That's also nice is that I'm not going to be super pregnant, you know, in like the mid, the middle of summer. Um, like I kind of was with Oliver, but cause like I, I was, yeah, I was pregnant all summer with Oliver cause he was born in September. And, um, so I was pregnant the hottest part of the hottest parts of the months. So like it's been hot, but at least it's still like, it's hovering around a hundred. It's not always a hundred. Sometimes it's a little bit lower than a hundred. It's not too, it's not too terrible. So I'm, I'm going to be out of it before we hit like the 115s. But that also just means I'm going to be in the house a lot, I'm not doing anything because it's so hot. I can't take the baby out. Um, but what was I saying? Now I don't remember. Um, <laughs> there's that too. I can't remember anything. Oh yeah. Skincare wise. So yeah. So I'm going to be using some of my maternity leave which I'm gonna get 16 weeks of, plus I'm taking a few extra weeks from some saved up vacation. So um, I'm trying to get as close to like six months as I can, but we'll see, we'll see <laughs> how, how well I do. Um, 
So skincare wise, I've been, I've not changed anything. I've not excluded anything. Um, I was using like a bio retinol for a while. I, I haven't used any like actual retinols while being pregnant, um, but I use like the, the bio, the bio retinols, you know, the Leilani, whatever, and something else. I can't remember. <sighs> Lung capacity is much diminished. I'm very tired. Um, body wise, I, I don't want to jinx myself. So knock on wood. Um, but I've not gotten stretch marks Again, I didn't get any with Oliver. So far I have still avoided that, which I hear is genetic, but I don't know. I think my mom got stretch marks, so I don't know. My sister I know for sure did. So I've avoided it so far. Hopefully it remains that way. Um, not that it would matter, but you know, obviously <laughs> um, I would like to not get them if possible, but I've been oiling up my belly since it started uh, expanding, which I didn't really start showing until I was, I was pretty far, I was like four months along, four, I was like between four and five months. No, because I was showing a little bit by the time I was 20 weeks, because I, I was at my anatomy scan, but I was only showing a little bit. It took a while for me to start showing, like I was at my, um, my boyfriend's for Thanksgiving in like November, and I was still very skinny. I was remembering that. December, I had started to gain a little weight, but I wasn't like showing. Like you couldn't actively tell that I was pregnant. So yeah, it was like around four months, four and a half months where I started showing. So like, the, so as soon as I started showing, I started oiling up my, um, my belly and I've been doing that every day. Um, so I'll use a combination of a body butter plus an oil. Um, the body butter that I've been using the entire time is Nini Organics um, Cocoa Melt, but he's it's now Cocoa Whip. But I don't have that version. I have the Cocoa. I have the Cocoa Melt, which was it's more like a bomb. Um, it's the one that came in the box that me and Erica did a couple of years ago. I still had a jar of that, so I've been using that. I'm about halfway through it. Um, I bet the Cocoa Whip is like even more amazing. I think it's exactly the same. It's just more of a whipped formula than a, than a bomb formula. So I've been using that mixed with an oil of some kind. So I've used um, Osmia Naked Oil. I've used uh, Osea Undaria Oil. Right now I'm using the Prima Body Oil. So it's just like whatever, whatever body. I, like I mix the two together. Oil her up. Um, no idea if that's actually been helping, but it's it makes me feel good. So I've been using... I've been using all that, but you know, it hasn't been, like it hasn't been a terrible, it hasn't been a terrible pregnancy. Like yeah, at the end I'm miserable and I'm so ready to be done. I am huge. <laughs> Getting around is like hard and things are painful and the heartburn sucks and I hate not being able to sleep comfortably, but um, yeah, for the majority of of this, it's it's not been it's not been too bad aside from like, you know, the morning sickness or the all day sickness because I was sick like all the time um, in the beginning. You know, there was a bunch of weeks you know in the middle where I felt really good and I was I was like myself. I was feeling good. I, and I had a lot of body image issues um, a lot more this time around than I did the first time because I had lost so much weight and then I just like regained it very quickly and like. I was having a hard time finding like maternity clothes that I liked and that fit. Um, I finally got there. <laughs> it took me a long time though. Um, but yeah, I had a lot more body image issues this time around than I did the first time around. Um, I'm preparing to breastfeed again. I'm gonna do things, you know, pretty much the same. I strictly co-slept with Oliver, but we are gonna try like a bassinet situation this time around. Um, sort of like a bedside bassinet thing. So we're going to try that just to sort of see, I don't know, a little bit different, just a little bit different, but yeah, I think that's about it in terms of like differences between, you know, this pregnancy versus my last one. And is this going to be my last one? I don't know. I don't know. We haven't quite decided yet. I think we're going to sort of see how it goes. 
um, and how hard recovery is. Oh, there is one other thing that I've been doing a little bit differently this time around. So I've been using like a tool to help um, stretch out that like area down there that tore last time, uh, the perineum, I think. I can never remember what things are called. Um, but yes, I'm using like a tool to help sort of like stretch that to hopefully avoid tearing again. But like, again, if it happens, it happens. It is what it is. So I have been doing that. Um, other than that, nothing, nothing else is different. Um, but yeah, so it sort of depends on like how hard my recovery is. If we want more kids, um, we'll just see. We'll sort of see how it goes. But Oliver is very excited. He's been involved through this whole process. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of changes for him and this is, it's, you know, things have been confusing, I'm sure. Um, but he's been very excited to have, you know, a sibling. He is very sweet. He's always kissing my belly. He's always telling me how excited he is. He can't wait to hold the baby. He can't wait to hold hands with the baby. Um, he's just being, I'm very excited for him to have a sibling. Like, I knew he was the kind of kid that needed, he needed, he needs more, like, social interaction. Like, he needs, he needs, he's very, he's like, a very, he's gonna be a people person. Like, he's, he loves people. Um, so, I didn't think initially that I was gonna be able to give him a sibling, because um, I did not want to have more children with the last person that I was with. Um, and once I came to that realization that, like, it wasn't that I didn't want more kids, I just didn't want more kids with that person, I was okay with having more kids. And then, you know, when the right person came into my life, it just happened the way that it was supposed to happen. So um, <laughs> I'm very excited and Oliver's very excited and my new family unit is very excited. Just everything's exciting, you know, things are good. So that's all that I really wanted to talk about. I know this is kind of long. Um, I hope I'm going to be getting back to some kind of regular schedule soon. I mean, granted, it took me a couple of months after Oliver was born, but we'll sort of see how things go. And I have a lot of maternity leave, so um, we'll see if the next update you'll get is another pregnancy update or if it's, I've had a baby. We'll see. <laughs> um, I'm still hoping to get some things filmed before the baby's born. We'll see about that as well. And yeah, that's, that's all that I've got for this video, so... Um, Thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.